Hi guys, welcome back. This is a, another uh, Defender video. This time we're going to do the laser shot. Pew pew! Uh, and if you've been watching these and you haven't already, uh, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, hitting the, that notification bell, you get timely reminders of this series and other videos that I post up. Um, and if you have, thank you very much for subscribing. And if you wouldn't mind hitting the like, uh, all of these things really help the channel out and I appreciate that. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so this one is, uh, like I said, getting the laser to fire for the, the player ship in Defender. And we start that after the fade. So what I've done is I've created a laser shot uh, animation that I'm going to drag and drop in here. And you can see that down there. I'm going to give it the same uh, imports as the ship, which means it's multiple because there's multiple frames in there. Uh, it's 1024 pixels. Um, per unit uh, that's unit to units but you can equate to being like a meter or, or whatever measurement you want to give it um, and we want to make that point no filter and click on apply and you can see that down here uh, uh, let me see if we can see that yeah so this is the the animation here so I'm going to go into sprite editor and I'm going to choose slice automatic and I'm going to choose um, grid by cell count so there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Just make sure there's six there. Uh, and then the pivot is going to be um, on the right hand side. Um, top left, top right, left, right, bottom, bottom right, custom. Um, Custom pivot is going to be X is 1, Y is 0 0.5. Uh, because I want it to be halfway down on the Y, but I want it to be all the way along to the right. So I want it to be the pivot point over here. So I'm going to click on slice, and that is going to give me the pivot point across here, which is exactly where I want it. Uh, and this is the animation that is um, the, the full scale version of uh, the sprite. So I'm going to click on apply and then do that. And then the shot animation, uh, to make that, I'm just going to select the first one, select the last one, and then I'm going to drag them onto the scene. And I'm going to create that inside here. So this is going to be laser shot uh, animation. And if we go to where that is in the scene, you see that we have our, let me see if we can zoom in here. So this is where our laser shot is. So if I press play, you see that it does that there. So we only want to play it once um, and then stop it. Um, I think that's, we could probably play that slower rate. So six frames. Ew, that's not good. Eight. Yeah, I think we're right with a 12. Yeah, that looks okay. And we'll stop that. And then we're going to go into our animator controller here. And um, we want to... Uh, we want to destroy that after... Uh, laser shot entry into laser shot uh, speed normalized time mirror slice cycle put it in key um, what do I want to do here uh, if you uh, Okay, I'm okay with leaving that just now. All right, so I do need to give that a collider though. So I'm going to give that, um, no, uh, where am I? Get rid of that animator. So I want to give this a box collider 2D and um, yeah, it doesn't have to be a trigger. 
Um, it just needs to touch something. So that's okay. Doesn't need a rigid body. Probably. Uh, let's add a rigid body. 2D. And we're going to make that kinematic again. And that is going to be our laser shot. So we're going to, this is going to be our, our prefab laser shot um, that we're going to use um, when we fire a weapon. So we don't actually need that just now. So I'm going to create a folder in here uh, called prefabs. And I'm going to call this one uh, laser shot prefab. I don't really need to call it laser shot prefab, but eh, I'm going to call it that. So we're going to remove that from the scene. Um, but we also need to add a script there to move it along on the x-axis, which is going to be a bit tricky. <laughs> uh, and this is where, yeah, this is going to be a bit tricky. Um, because I think we need the same script that we have for the camera, because it has to kind of wrap the world. Because if you're if the player's at the, the edge of the world and they fire, it needs to go and wrap around to the, the first screen, if that makes sense. So remember our screens, just to sort of go back here, why is that not saving? Um, so yeah, so if we go back into, there's, there's things spawning there. But if we go back into here and we start firing the laser at this point, we need it to appear in world, in screen four. And we don't have that just yet. So we need to add that functionality to the laser shot. Well, let's get, let's get the laser shot done first of all. So if we go to our scripts, uh, get rid of that animation script there. Um, so yeah, so we go to the script, we've got ship move. Um, let's have a ship fire script. So we're going to create C sharp script, uh, laser fire control. And laser fire control is going to go on the main player. But we don't really have a main player, do we? We just got this game controller and then we have a main camera. So we can put that on here. Uh, there's the player ship there. So we've got ship move, which is that one there. And so we can add our, uh, let's drag and drop that to there. Uh, laser fire, okay. So for our laser control, we're gonna have public game object, uh, laser prefab, um, public float cooldown period equals, and then, well, actually, we don't have a cooldown period because it's only when you press the fire button. So we don't really have a, a cooldown period for this because uh, we only ever fire it when uh, the, the player presses the button. So Inside our update, we want to say input dot get button um, down fire fire one, um, and then we want to have it so that so if I go to the player ship in our scene, so our scene is there, and um, if I drag the first one out, so the first frame of the the, uh, the laser shot, so here's our first laser shot here, um, player ship. So this is going to be where main camera is. So I'm going to go and copy component. Um, paste component values. Uh, Where's the player ship? Player ship is 10 in. Okay, so that's going to be zero. Uh, yeah. So there is our ship, and there is the shot. So that is where the shot has to start. 
which is 2.6. So it would have made it 3. So 3 is too far. So 2.6 uh, is right on Q. So it's, um, but this is relative to there. So if I do that as 0, well, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out where the, the best part to get this is. So if I do 0 0.1, 5 no uh, mm, 0 0.09 is good so where is that in the real world well the nice way we can do this is uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be 0 0.09 of a difference from where the player's position is. But the player is is centered to that. So really we've got to figure out from this distance here. So it is so if I do zero, that puts it away back there. Because remember um, where the, the pivot point for the shot is at the front of it because we need to do the fire and then there's the animation and then there's also the kind of drag uh, from the, the the speed of the bullet if I'm making any sense. So we have this we have this bullet here. Um, let me just make myself a little bit bigger. So we have this bullet here and uh, this is the front of the bullet and this is the back of the bullet. So the front of the bullet is the pivot point. So we need to figure out where this point is relative to this point. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to figure out just now, if that makes at all sense. Um, actually, I could probably draw a diagram. That would probably make more sense. Uh, let me do new uh, print. Yeah, it's good enough. Print. Okay. So if I... Uh, okay, so if I've got the if I've got the player here, oh, sorry about the, oh, it's a weird angle. Uh, D. So if the player, uh, so the player ship is here, so that's the player ship, and we have a bullet here. Okay, so that's the initial shape of it, but it's actually part of a larger frame. And so it's this point over here that we're interested in. Oh, sorry, I've done it again. Darn it. Oh, I do apologize. Here you go. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, okay. So we have our player ship here. So this is the player ship over here. And we have our first frame, which is this uh, this bullet here, which is the, the, the first frame shape. But the actual... Uh, sprite itself is this size. So our pivot point is way over here because we're um, well this well this bullet is going to be traveling kind of in sprite space I guess uh, it's going to get dragged along in that direction from this point here. Uh, I hope this is making sense um, but we need to figure out what this point is which means we need to find out the offset for this point here. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, um, now that we've thoroughly confused everybody. So if I make that to be zero, that's not gonna work, but if I make it to 0 0.4 or 0 0.39 from the starting point of here, or 0 0.3 is not far enough, 0 0.4 is probably too far, um, but you see that the pivot point is over here in space, not this point here. Whereas the the uh, the ship, the player ship, his pivot point is here as well. So, um, okay. So I think zero point four is probably good enough for this. So I will delete that laser shot. Uh, 
uh, and I'm just going to hardwire it in here just now. Actually, let's do um, public float offset e equals 0 0.39f. Okay, so um, we want to get the player's position, so we're going to do uh, var pause equals transform dot world uh, position, which is going to give us space position, plus new vector 3, and then it's going to be the offset, uh, and then nothing else, and then we're going to say var copy equals uh, instantiate, uh, and then it's the original, which is our prefab, um, we don't have a parent, but we do want to have the position, which is going to be position returning dot identity. Um, and that's it. That's all we want to have. So when we press the fire button, we spawn that bullet. And that will play um, a certain um, animation when we press the fire button as well. So without moving, if I press the, um, let me move to a blue screen so we can actually see the thing. So if I press the fire button, uh, I get a missing prefab, which is expected because I forgot to do that. So if I go to the spaceship and then I go to my prefabs, oops, spaceship, and then I drag that prefab into there, that gives us a laser shot. So if I press fire now, There we go. So that's our laser fire. So we have it. So that's going to do that there. So if we do that there, we, we still have to have it travel. Actually, maybe we don't need to do that because it, I don't know if it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be a faster. Okay. So we also need um, a, um, a script here, which is going to be bullet move. And bullet move is going to be attached to the prefab. So I'm going to double click this prefab to open up and I'm going to add in bullet move. Um, and then back into here open up bullet move and this is just going to be um, so the start we're going to record where the start position is and we're going to say actually we just want it to be open for a duration um, so let's do I enumer numerator oof uh, start um, so it's going to be for a time um, and we don't know what that time is yet, so let's just say um, public float duration equals, eh? uh, well, it's 12 frames a second, and it plays 6 frames, so that means it's going to be 0 0.5 seconds. That sounds about right. Uh, so 12 frames a second, we only have 6 frames, so after our 6th frame, we kill it. So 0 0.5, okay, uh, var t equals 0, while t, uh, t is less than 1, t plus equals time dot delta time divided by duration, uh, yield return null. Uh, and then we'll say um, transform dot position plus equals new vector three, um, and then this is going to be um, actually it's going to be vector three dot right. Uh, well, we don't know what the direction is going to be, so we might need to pass that in. 
So let's do public um, float direction equals one. So that is going to be right times direction times time dot delta time uh, divided by duration. Oops, I want to duplicate that. Um, I feel like I'm missing something or I'm not doing something right. Hang on a sec. Let me just think about this. Okay, so when the bullet starts, it's going to... Let me clean this up a bit. So when the bullet starts, it's going to do this enumeration. So it's going to say, okay, t is equal to zero. So while t is less than one, um, we're going to add to the current position um, whatever the direction is, right or left. Um, and then we're going to multiply that by the current delta time divided by duration, which means that it's going to be half a second. So it's going to move half a second, and then we're going to add that to there. And then after that, we're going to destroy it. So we're going to do destroy game object. Okay. Um, we also need to um, we also need to have a public void um, was hit. Okay, let's just leave that just now. I want to, I want to have a think about that because when when the bullet gets actually let's leave that to the next video. When the bullet gets hit, we want to react to it in some way, um, but I don't quite know how we want to react yet. Um, whether we're going to use an event or whether we're going to bubble it up or what are we going to do? I know what we are going to do. We're going to add a score and. Um, you know, destroy both game objects. That's that's what we're going. We're that's the action we're going to do. But how we achieve that action, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that yet. So pressing fire. Oh, there we go. Fire. All right. That looks awesome. Well, we don't have the direction in yet, so we we can't officially say it's awesome just now. A bit of a glitch when you chase it and I think it's because uh, it doesn't quite but yeah that looks okay okay let's get the direction in there now so the direction is handled by uh, the laser fire control needs to know the direction so in player ship we have our uh, laser control we have ship move so um, we have this in here, do horizontal, sprite renderer, flip. Do we know, we don't store that, oh, we do just store that direction. <laughs> so um, direction, is direction exposed? No, direction is not exposed. So what if we did um, public direction, direction, Direction. A lot of directions there. Um, let's do. Actually, let's do. Let's. You know what? Let's do float. Uh, and then we'll say right uh, minus one. Okay. Um, we don't need ship out of direction. Oh, um, let's call that sign direction. So, because we already have a property here called directions, we can't call it the same thing. So, if we call it sign direction, then it's just going to return one or minus one because we don't need to expose that out there. And it'll make it a little bit easier on us when we do our shoot. So when we do shoot, we 
laser fire control. Ah, also the laser fire control has got to be the start position. That's okay. We can get that in just a sec. So laser fire control. Um, we're going to have uh, requires a type of, um, and this is going to be ship move. Actually, it's cam move, isn't it? No, it's not. Ship move. Ship move. Okay. And then awake. Um, edit. Ship move. Uh, ship move dot uh, equals get component ship move. Okay, so now we have ship move. Now we want to say public offset. So whatever the offset is times the direction. Times direction, same direction. Um, and then we want to do copy dot get component bullet move dot direction equals that uh, equals ship move dot same direction um all right but that's not going to solve our positional information so we need to flip the sprite as well so we also need to do copy dot get component sprite renderer dot flip x equals ship moved Ship move uh, less than zero. So if all right. So what did I do there? So if the if the the ship sprite, uh, sorry. If the ship is facing in the left hand direction, we're going against the right because the right is the default direction. So we want to flip the x and we want to travel in the opposite direction. Um. So we basically want to rotate. Excuse me a second. Uh, we want to rotate um, the. We want to flip the the ship on. We want to flip the bullet on the X, on the X. Sorry, on the Y axis, so it's facing that direction. So <clears throat> our laser works this way, which is good. But does it work the other way? And it does. There you go. I think that's the first time we've tried something that it actually uh, works. There we go. Oh, this looks great. Okay. And let's try it without the, the background. So if I do screens and I turn them off, although this is going to make it look psychedelic. <laughs> uh, yeah. Whoa. Trippy. Yikes. Okay. Yeah, maybe not. Let's just leave the screens in there. Um, we should actually replace them with the with the the, uh, the proper terrain. But okay, I'm uh, I'm happy with that. I think um, I think that's a that's a good place to stop the video there. So there you go. We have our shot. <laughs> we have our shot, uh, so to speak. Uh, so we get the player shooting. Um, and next time we'll deal with the, the, the collision detection. I was going to try it at the end there, but uh, let's leave it for the next video. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, if you like this video, thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below if you don't like the video or you just want to ask a question about uh, the thought process, whatever it is. If you got this far uh, and you want to keep watching this, this uh, series, then hit that subscribe button, smash that notification bell, and uh, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video. So, bye-bye. But wait, there's a little bit more because I, I actually went on and, and did some more in this, uh, this session. Um, I'm not going to continue with the... I was going to do collision detection and collision response. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but I did make some changes to the scene. And so if you're interested in those changes, they are following this little outro segment thing. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. 
uh, and I'll catch you again in the next video. You just saw me saying this, but uh, anyway, I'm recording this a little bit later during the edit. So uh, anyway, I, I just thought I'd include it anyhow. So bye. We've got the shooting working. Um, should we get collision working? Hmm. Okay, let's get collision work. Um, all right. So for each one of these, we have a, so the screen spawner has got the landers, um, which are all, um, darn it. Well, this is why we use prefabs. Okay, well let's let's do that then. So let's copy this transform. So copy component, um, and then I'm going to add a box collider 2D, and I'm going to add a renderer, um, rigid body 2D, um, and I'm going to create that as being kinematic. So <clears throat> that is our lander. And I'm going to create a prefab for that. So um, I'm going to drag lander into prefabs. So now we have a lander prefab. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill all these other landers there. And I'm going to duplicate this one four times. And then I'm going to go to lander spawner. And you'll see that we... Uh, we have these lander teleports. Or lander teleports. Where did I just do the screen one spawner, lander spawner? I'm so confused. What what are these for? Boy, you know, uh, quick while you're ahead. Um, what did I do? <laughs> uh, is this a main camera? No, land of spawner. No, these are all there. How did? How does Lander come into this? Oh, does it find... No, wait, what? Lander spawner. Let's look in here. Spawner. Uh, spawn, spawn points, random range. Where's pool? Where's pool? Game object, spawn points. One object. Um, okay, I, I wrote this in the last video, and I don't know what it does. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Um, every second is really after the items are spawned. Okay, so we spawn that, and then the lander spawner. Spawn object, okay. I mean, I get what it does, it's spawning that, but I'm not sure where it's, like, I can't see where it's picking up the landers. So these are tagged as spawners. Lander teleport. Um, so does it just work then? So screen one. So that's screen one. Uh, 
does I, I get uh, maybe I don't see that one's no that doesn't have a script against it land of spawner is just these game objects which are just game objects and then the teleports are these things here um, which oh it's just teleport people that's why because the lander teleport itself ah, okay my mistake okay right let me get rid of that okay so i don't need the landers there i need the lander teleport so if i enable that okay now what i need is i need a uh, rigid body 2d against there and I need a box collider 2D. Okay. Um, box collider 2D. I'm going to make that a trigger. And I'm going to make that kinematic. All right. Okay. This is the reason why. All right. Now I understand. So we just need to get rid of all these landers because they don't actually get used anywhere. Um, Uh, get rid of these ones here and get rid of these ones here. Uh, no, these ones here. Okay. Delete. Okay. So now we go back up to the top here and we get rid of the lander teleport. Let's get rid of that prefab, which is that one there. Uh, yep. And then I'm going to create this one here and I'm just going to call this lander because that's what it is um, and I'm going to drag and drop that into the prefabs okay that's better and then I'm going to get rid of all of these and I'm going to do two three four five okay now I'm going to go to my spawner and these are all missing and I'm going to delete all of these so I'm going to remove all of them and then I'm going to lock this down and then I'm going to drag and drop these into uh, here. So this is the object pool. And these are the spawn points. Sorry, let me just bring that up there. This is the object pool. These are the spawn points. Okay. Now I need to do the same thing for each one of these. So uh, I don't know if I can replace this. Uh, edit. Can I replace this? I actually wrote a little tool. Did I write it? We used it anyway um, when I when I worked on Lost Orbit, and you could select various objects and you could replace it with a um, with a prefab. I can't remember if I wrote it or if we got it from the asset store. It was super handy anyway. Whoever wrote it, um, but I don't see it. It was I think it was in game object. Components. Yeah, right. Look. Okay, I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way. So that is copy component, and I'm going to drag lander into here. Uh, into screen two, and I'm going to paste component values. And I'm going to delete these guys. Boom. And I'm going to duplicate them. One, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, I need to disable them. That's the other thing. Go to Lander Spawner. Lock it off. Zero. This gets tedious after a while. Uh, Lander Spawner. Lock it off. And drag that into there. Unlock it. Uh, go to this lander. Go to these landers here. Uncheck them. Okay. So lander spawner. Uh, that one is active. Um, and then we do the same thing for the other one. So I'll cut this bit out, and we'll 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 join up after this. All right. So that's that done.
um, now we go back to our bullet. We want to do um, well. Each one of these are, are um, these are set to be triggers. So if we do a bullet, where's the bullet move? We can do our um, on trigger enter two D. Um, we can then check to see if it is a particular object. So it's a spawner. So we can say if collision dot tag equals spawner um, stop all coroutines. I want to stop all coroutines. I want to say destroy game object. Um, destroy collision dot game object. So we want to destroy not only we want to stop the code routines <clears throat> on this one here um, and we want to destroy it now it could be uh, to do do we need to shut down things on the spawner who knows actually it's a lander don't uh, where are we that's not the one i'm looking for so this is a lander uh, I'm locked in. What am I locked into? Okay, so these are on tag. So if I go to lander and I choose tag, um, I can add a tag and I'm going to call that lander. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> then I go back to lander and I choose lander and that's it. So all of these are now called landers. So this is going to be lander. Okay. Um, so all of these, oh, these need to be disabled as well. Make sure they're all disabled. They are. Screen one is disabled. Screen two, screen three, screen four. Okay. And we run this. So now. Moved it. Hmm. Almost instantaneously, though, which is not really what I want, because um, it really has to. So I don't, the, the shot, so if I go to laser shot here, um, I, I don't want, I don't want the, the box collider to be the same size as um, this whole thing here. So even if I was to bring in box collider, so it's zero. Um, and then the size. Oof. Is that size far too small or what? Um, ugh. Maybe I made the pixels a little bit bigger. Okay, well that's that's better. Zero point one, zero point zero five. There we go. And then the Y offset is zero point zero zero one. Okay. 
No, minus 0 0.015. All right, there we go. Okay, so it's a little bit thinner. Uh, it's a little bit thinner, so it's not going to take up as much space. But I also want it to travel uh, at that point there. So... Yeah, I want it to move along the same axis. Or do I? I think I'm over. I feel I'm overcomplicating things there. Um, okay, so if I come into the scene here and I fire. Well, it's removing them. Okay, so I'm in line with that guy there. Um, and a fire. Yeah, 